بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد We're back tonight inshallah ta'ala for our 11th chapter of the Quran Surah Hud alayhi salatu wasalam that we're going to be focusing on inshallah This is a chapter that has 123 verses and the meaning of the name comes from the Prophet Hud alayhi salatu wasalam and we're told he is Hud ibn Shalih his father's name is Shalih. وَيَرْجِعُ نَسَبُهُ إِلَى سَامْ إِبْنُ نُوح عليه الصلاة والسلام We're told that his lineage goes back to Sam and Sam of course being from the uh, direct offspring of Prophet Nuh, Noah. May Allah Ta'ala's peace and blessings be upon all of them. أَرْسَلَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ إِلَى قَوْمِ عَادٍ فِي مَوْضِي الْأَحْقَافِ مِنْ بِلَادِ الْيَمِنِ So this is that messenger that Allah Ta'ala sent to the people who lived in an area known as Al-Ahqaf in the greater country of what is known as Yemen. Allah Ta'ala relieved the suffering in Yemen and everywhere else in the world, Allahumma Ameen. The reason why the chapter is named after Prophet Hud, we're told, Tafsilu qissati Hudin alayhi salam fi hadhi surati duna ghayriha min suri al-Qur'an al-Karim. That Allah Ta'ala gives more attention to Prophet Hud in this chapter and he details something of his life experience in a way that he doesn't in any of the other chapters and therefore it's almost as though the chapter is exclusively uh, you know, for him in that sense. It's not, but it's as though. And therefore since he is the dominant character within the, you know, this chapter, Allah Ta'ala has named the whole chapter after him. As far as the names are concerned, we don't know of any other name besides Surah Hud. And as far as its general objectives, what we do have is بَيَانُ مُهِمَّةِ الرُّسُلِ فِي تَقْرِيرِ عَقِيدَةِ التَّوْحِيدِ وَالْبَعْثِ So the first thing is that the messengers were, were being told very clearly that the messenger's main objective is to call people to understand the belief in one God, monotheism. And to also understand that there is a life after death, that there is a resurrection minhum, As well as Allah Ta'ala also telling us about, again, the positions, the reactions of the people to their prophets, to their messengers. As far as the reason why it was revealed, we're told that it is a Meccan chapter and we don't have anything that's authentic with regards to the chapter or any verses from the chapter being revealed. Well, what about its merits? Um, we have here one, we're told, فِيهَا مَوْعِذَةٌ شَدِيدَةٌ عَنِ الْعَذَابِ وَأَهْوَالِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ That the chapter itself is, is uh, a startling chapter that focuses on the severity of punishment that Allah Ta'ala has mentioned through the chapter as well as the, the horrificness of the day of resurrection you know, Judgment Day and all that it's going to entail of the resurrection and, and accountability. فَعَنْ إِبْنِ عَبَّاسٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ مَا قَالْ قَالَ أَبُوْ بَكْرٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ So this hadith, we have uh, Sahabi conveying, uh, relating it from another Sahabi. We have Abdullah bin Abbas telling us what Abu Bakr رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلْ عَنْهُ basically has said. And in this case, he had said to the Prophet والسلام, Ya Rasulullah qad shibta. So Abu Bakr notices something with regards to the Prophet والسلام, and he says to him, O Messenger of Allah, you've grown some white hairs. And we know that he وسلم, when he passed away, he had about what, uh, five or something of that total, if I remember correctly, and I probably don't. But he had nothing. I mean, you look at me, I'm, I'm much younger than what he was والسلام, and yet... Uh, I, I look like a Muslim Santa Claus, right? So Abu Bakr having noticed this with regards to the Prophet والسلام, he mentions it. But here's a finer point. So imagine that in a, in a beautiful head of black hair to have seen just a few, to tell you the level of detail and attention that they paid to Allah, to the Prophet والسلام, to Allah's Messenger وسلم, that they noticed they, they, they literally almost as though they had a magnifying glass on him sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And this is true about everything of his beliefs, his worship, his character, but even his persona, his, his being sallallahu alayhi wasallam. 
So what was the response? فَقَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمْ شَيَّ بَتْنِ هُودٌ وَأَخَوَاتُهَا And in some narrations he says هُودٌ وَالْوَاقِعَةُ وَالْمُرْسَلَاتُ وَعَمَّ يَتَسَأَلُونَ وَإِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ So the Messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام's response was this chapter of Hud and its sisters have, have uh, basically caused me to age, right? And in other narration, it mentions what those other chapters are. So it's Hud, Al-Waqi'ah, Al-Mursalat, Al-Naba' and Al-Takweer. And this hadith is Sahih and it is uh, collected by Imam Al-Tirmidhi. The second virtue for this chapter is that it is from the chapters that are begin with Alif Lam Ra and we have the previous hadith of where the man came and asked the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam and he said to him read three chapters that have Alif Lam Ra in the beginning of them. But what about the relationship of the beginning to the end? So we're told مُنَاسَبَةُ أَوَّلِ سُورَةِ هُودٍ عَلَيْهِ سَلَامٍ بِآخِرِهَا الْحَدِيثُ عَنْ اسْمِ اللَّهِ الْخَابِيرِ وَمُقْتَضَاهُ So Subhanallah, the, the chapter as a whole, the beginning with the end of it, that Allah is helping us to understand His beautiful name, Al-Khabir, the one that is all aware, and all that it entails, all that we should understand, knowing that Allah is the all aware, Subhanahu. فَقَالَ فِي فَاتِحَتِهَا مِلَّدٌ حَكِيمٍ خَبِيرٌ That this chapter is from the one who is Hakim, Again, all wise and the, the, the most perfect in all that he decrees, Khabir, the one that is all aware. وَقَالَ فِي خَاتِمَتِهَا وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ And your cherisher, your nurturer, your Lord, is not heedless, is not oblivious, is not, uh, you know, unaware of all that you do, or of what you do. And so the connection is there to help us understand that he who is Al-Khabir, that there's not a thing that happens except that he is fully aware, has full knowledge, detail, complete, nothing is missing. And there's in no way Allah Ta'ala ever being, for example, uh, not, not knowing of what's happening. Well, what about the relationship between Hud and Yunus, these two prophets, alayhi salatu wasalam? We're told اختتمت سورة يونس عليه السلام بسم الله الحكيم فقال وهو خير الحكيمين الله تعالى كنقول سورة يونس with his beautiful name الحكيم he concluded it saying and he is the best of those who are wise in decree وافتتحت سورة هود عليه السلام بسم الله الحكيم سبحان الله الله تعالى began Surah Hud alayhi salam with the same beautiful name of Al-Hakim فَقَالَ تَعَالَ مِنْ لَدٌ حَكِيمٍ خَبِيرٍ From the one who is Hakim, Khabir. So we see the connection being that Allah Ta'ala is helping make the transition through His beautiful name of being Al-Hakim, the one that is all-knowing, the most wise, and the one who is perfect in all that He decrees. And this is the one that we believe in, believe in. This is the one that we worship out of love for him. This is the one that we believe will bless us with paradise and save us from any suffering when we go back to him. And we ask him Jalla to truly help us to learn and better understand what he gives us of guidance in the Quran so that we have certainty of faith and that we have nothing of doubts. Allahumma ameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Muhammad.